cars pay in numbers, right? That's how the game works here. It's not always a shipment. It's, you know, especially the new car contracts. They've always got steady contracts of steady freight going to steady places, and the rate's always the same, right? Hey, everybody. It's Todd Dills back with another edition of Overdrive Radio. This one for November 19, 2021. The week ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday and taking time out here to engage with two independent car haulers. That was Indiana-based owner-operator David Bunting you heard up top. Speaking to how the rate structure works often enough moving cars on a per-vehicle basis. And fuel surcharges? Well... In the freight world, in the freight world, fuel surcharge is a huge thing and it's right out there in front of you. It's a separate number from what your load pays. It's awesome. In the car hollow world, these guys go, yeah, that's built into the rate. And you go, the rate was the same as it was a month ago, and fuel was up as soon as the Biden administration took over. Right. I say that to say that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves about being a car hauler is those rates, they don't fluctuate with fuel, dude. So when fuel got to be four and five bucks a gallon a couple of years ago, there are guys that didn't make it because the rates did not go up to reflect it. There's plenty more in the way of challenges, and that includes keeping a close eye on your trailer height. As noted Eric Turner, Georgia-based owner of Small Fleet Turner's Transport. Particularly true for Southeast-based haulers heading to destinations north of Mason-Dixon. The rule of thumb is once you get past Virginia, you better be low. <laughs> you ain't low, you'll be buying a car. <laughs> Yet for the self-starting, self-reliant among owner-operators, there's a reason so many are attracted to the hauling niche. In this car haul, it's all you. You load it, you take it, you deliver it, right? Nobody does anything for you but you. Right. Which is also part of the reason why I got into this. I trust one guy out here, bro, and it's <laughs> me. It hasn't been exactly gravy for the traditionally lucrative niche in recent times, though. As Overdrive News editor Matt Cole's recent three-part feature led off with an illustration of how car haulers are coping with auto market turmoil since the COVID-19 pandemic began. More lately, a shortage of semiconductors hampering the new auto market and beginning to affect the used car availability as well. Search auto market turmoil at overdriveonline.com to read the full series, an in-depth look at car hauling. Today, we'll dive in with owner-operator Bunting, as well as Eric Turner, from conversations Cole had with each of them this fall to go into a little more of their histories. Yep, I am uh, in the beautiful Florida heat loading cars. Yeah, Turner, like a lot of car haulers, was showing off a skill that many an owner operator holds, no doubt. I can talk and load at the same time. Before we jump into it in full, though, I wanted to take a moment here to share a new song about a driver and his truck. It's called Virginia Red. And if you're a listener to our weekly streaming show, Overdrive's Music to Truck By with host Big Al Weekly, you'll know it's about the truck Al's driven these most recent years. He debuted the song today on the show. The song was written with and sung by his wife, Sandy Shortridge. So, before we dive into the meat of the program, enjoy a little of the tale told here in Virginia Red. Sometimes I feel lost the directions are all wrong I turn on the radio And tune in a bluegrass song Dashboard lights are shining Brighter than the moon A thousand miles and I'll drop this slow And I will be Eighteen wheels are a-humming Like a gypsy that is free Out here on the highway Virginia Red and me So many things she's heard I speak my heart right out loud but she never says a word Never makes one sound Like to be in a warm bed With a pillow for my head But I'm traveling down this highway With old Virginia Red 
Eighteen wheels are a humming Like a gypsy that is free Out here on the highway We'll finish it out on the back end. Before I hand it off to owner-operator David Bunting to narrate the circuitous path he took to car hauling, here's a brief word from Overdrive Radio's sponsor. First Guard provides commercial truck insurance to leased owner-operators done right. As we've done for more than 80 years, we provide physical damage and non-trucking. Many companies make you pay up to six months of insurance premiums up front, but not First Guard. We bill monthly, so you get quality insurance without needing to pay a lot of cash up front. Go to firstguard.com. That's one S T guard.com. First Guard. We speak trucker. Let's talk. In high school, I, I was a smart kid. I was on honor roll, I, 1,200 SATs. Like, I was smart, dude. I was smart. I should have went to college and been an accountant or a business guy of some kind or whatever, whatever. But I went to college for a year, and I'll be honest, it was like, wow, they really mean it when they mean read this stuff. But college was serious, dude. They were serious about <laughs> that. And I don't know, I just realized, like, I don't know that I could sit in an office for years. So I was doing landscape in the summers as my summer job, and I liked the physical work of it, you know? Show up in the morning with a blank slate, and when you leave at the end of the day, you can actually tell you did something. That made me feel worthwhile. And then um, I was in my, I was I was 20, just, uh, just turned 21 that summer, and my best buddy from high school called me, and he said, hey, um, my dad... My dad uh, is going to hire a couple drivers. His dad was the driver uh, coordinator and like recruiter for the local beer company in my town, right? Home every night job, um, running a beer truck. So he said, he said, dad said, if we apply, he'll hire us and they'll, they'll train us and give us our CDLs for free, bro. I was <laughs> like, oh yeah, that was the one and only time in my life I ever got a, what I call a hand, right? Like someone that gave me an opportunity. We went, we applied, got our CDLs. We were just fresh 21s, man. So I drove for them for about a year, and I wanted to get some more experience. I wanted to, I wanted to drive a big truck for some reason. I don't know why, but I just did, you know. So I went over the road. I went to Knight Transportation. Knight Transportation were expanding their division. They opened a terminal in Indianapolis at the time. I was 23 years old and only had a year and a half big truck experience cdl yeah. and they were like you're too young we can't hire you and i was like i promise i'm good at what i do you, like you hire me you won't regret it right yeah. so they gave me a a road test and uh i'll be honest with you matt what a big jump from a single axle 30 foot bay truck to a tandem axle sleeper 53 foot drive in right but i was able to drive it they hired me um, they, they made me ride with a trainer for a month or so, and then they turned me loose. Well, <laughs> so out of Indianapolis, dude, all we did was run back and forth to New Jersey and Delaware. So here's what I made my decision. It's a Thursday morning. It was pouring down rain. I was sitting on the George Washington Bridge, stuck in traffic, fully loaded with 55-gallon barrels of hazmat material that they were going to make concrete with, yeah. and I could feel the bridge flexing as we're sitting there. And I said, I called my mom and I said, I'm done with this job and get this load delivered. You're going to come pick me up in Indy. Owner operator David Bunting then drove dump trucks for a couple of few years. And by then, in the late 1990s, Elkhart, Indiana, the recreational vehicle capital of the world, was booming. Bunting traded in a sports car he'd bought for a dually pickup and bought a Kaufman ramp trailer. I had already started the process to get my own authority and stuff like that, which back then it was a lot easier than it is now, by the way. It was just a couple phone calls and a lawyer. And I just started doing it on my own. It was like, you know, I don't know. I was always one of those guys that like when I ran the roll off truck, it was a, it was a per diem rate. Like they paid you so much to switch a box and so much to get back. When they paid us that way, man, the faster you did a rate, the more money you made, right? Mm -hmm. You were beating the rate. So I uh, hammer down all the time. So I took that into this into this cargo trailer thing, right? So we were running with Dooley's cargo trailers out to Connecticut, out to down to Florida, down to North Carolina. And then we were getting on, it was when Central Dispatch was just getting started. Central Dispatch, you'd, you'd get a few cars mm -hmm. back to Elkhart. Well, 
as time went on, I built more of a car relationship. The cars paid better than these cargo trailers did actually, but it was still my mainstay because I only lived an hour and a half from where these cargo trailers were loaded. So in Northern Indiana, the game was, we'd get with somebody that was helping us get dispatched with cars. I was like, hey, where are there some cars? I'll try to get a trailer load that way, if that makes sense, right? And so now you're starting to say, okay, we can't run one way loaded, one way empty. We gotta keep this thing loaded. Trailers out and these cars back. And long story short, my cars just kept growing and moving and more and more. As hauling cars then became that focal point of business, David Bunting began to look around for further opportunity. Kaufman at the time made five car trailer. It was a double double stacker five car that they said you could pull with a dually legally. So I I, I went and uh, I sold my three car and I went and bought a five car Wally Mo a uh, Kaufman five car trailer. Um, and so you put three units on the top and two in the belly. Um, you could pull it with a dually. You couldn't stop it, Matt. But picture this, right? So you're driving a dually, but you're hauling three Suburbans on the top and two cars in the belly. Increasingly, discomfort with the setup led the owner-operator naturally to bigger trucks with more horsepower, sure, but more effective braking capacity as well. So I upgraded my dually to a, to a 650, an F650, for the five car because I couldn't stop the five car, right? Right. So, so, so then I upgraded again, and then I finally ended up getting rid of that little 650 for, for a, a big international tractor, an old school 95 international tractor. And then I bought a six car trailer, right, from a guy. Um, and then I went to a seven car stacker Wally Mo trailer, right? Because, because in, because in cars, cars pay in numbers, right? That's how the game works here. It's not always a shipment. It's, you know, especially the new car contracts. They've always got steady contracts of steady freight going to steady places and the rate's always the same, right? Just depends on how many you can haul. Also, Tundras pay more than Corollas do, obviously because they're size. So mm -hmm. that's the, that's how the car hauling game pay works. Miles and size, uh, always, always in a factor in car hauling. Um, you know, reason we became car haulers is because that was the word on the street was you don't, nothing makes more money on the road than a car hauler or a tanker or an oversized load. Obviously, oversized guys are where it's at. You know, the big exercise guy. But that is more money out. You know, you gotta pay oversized permits and you gotta pay sh you chaperone or escorts and things like that. And this car hauler, it's all you. You load it, you take it, you deliver it, right? Nobody does anything for you but you. Right. Which is also part of the reason why I got into this. I trust one guy out here, bro, and it's me. <laughs> that was a big part of the ultimate appeal of the car haul business for another owner operator featured in Cole's car hauling series earlier this month. C.G. Souza of now four trucks Souza Trucking. Once he went around that early loading learning curve that all car haulers experience, Souza came to love not being at the mercy of dock personnel in particular. But like the next man we're going to hear, he's taken a different tack in building the business than Bunting, who remains mostly a one man, one truck operation. But with some extra equipment to haul cars in a few different configurations, you can read about in Matt Cole's Car Hauling Three Part Series. C.G. Souza out in California, though, has built a team of four owner-operators, soon to be plus one with a company driver in Souza Trucking. And Eric Turner out of the Atlanta area, well, he's gone even farther than that, now operating a split eight-unit fleet, moving cars on high-mount Wally Mo eight-car trailers, and with reefer trailers as well in food movement. Here's a little more of Turner's story. I started with a tow truck right out of high school. Um, I didn't want to go off to college, and... You know, I, I could have went, put it like this, I could have went to college. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a, a a real good athlete, but just to be honest, I couldn't pass the SAT. So back then, I could have went to JUCO, and I decided not to go to, um, you know, junior college or college JUCO. So I decided not to go to um, junior college and took the money that my parents had saved up. For my college fund, they had saved up my college money. I took that money and um, bought a tow truck. I guess that was my destiny. So I went from one tow truck. I had got up to um, six tow trucks. And then I got to the point. And that's when I went and got a tractor trailer. And I started from scratch and with the tractor trailer. And I fell in love with the tractor trailer. And this is where I'm at now. Yeah. What year did you uh what year did you 
get your first uh, tractor trailer and get your own authority? Uh, 99. And That's when uh, I really, really call myself going legit then. <laughs> I was pretty much kind of already established with the the hauling part. That's the reason why I got the tractor trailer. Mm -hmm. Due to the fact I got tired of just hauling two cars at one time. I got you. So when I got tired of hauling, I, I got, you know, start hauling with dealerships, taking cars back and forth to the auction. And, you know, like I said, I got tired of hauling two cars at one time. I got to the point like, man, look here, they got 40, 50, 60 cars they need to take to the auction, just hauling two cars at one time, you know, fuel getting, you know, you got to do a better way. Right. So, and that's when I um went out and bought a, a night. As a matter of fact, I wish I still had that truck. I wish I knew what was that. A 1997 Kenworth W900 with a um, seven car Wally Mo trailer. Okay. And that was my that was officially my first um, track the trailer that I, that I own. I got gotcha. you. That was fishing my first track the trailer. So I started with that, and I drove it probably mm, about a year, and then I went and got a Stinger, and I went. I had at the, at the height of the time I had five Stingers at one time, the ten car haulers. Okay. And. When the economy started going bad in 07, I started selling the Stingers. You know, in 07, when the economy went real bad, mm -hmm. with car haul, like, matter of fact, the whole track the trailer part went bad. Right. So I started selling, started selling Stingers, and when I, I went back down to one truck. And when it started picking back up, I decided I wasn't going to go the Stinger route no more. And Wanted to go back to the type of trucks that I have now, the the high mount, they call them high mounts. Okay. Due to the fact if the economy ever went bad again, you was able to drop your trailer and go pull a reefer or a dry van or, you know, flatbed or whatever. Right. Didn't so, have to transform the whole truck. Yeah, I didn't have to transform the whole truck. So that was pretty much my philosophy, and I've been sticking with it. Everybody said, well, you get a lot of people say, well, why you won't get a stinger again? It's just that I look at right now, look at all the guys with stingers right now. Yeah. A lot of them guys have lost them trucks. Right. Computer chips, no cars, pandemic hit, mm -hmm. nothing to move. Only thing was moving was refrigerated freight. That was my main reason because even when the pandemic hit, I had two more reefer trailers that would drop trailers. Well, what all I did was told two of the drivers, hey, look here, drop that trailer, that car hauler trailer, and get hooked up on that reefer trailer and and keep pushing them. My, my motto is some money is better than no money. That's right. So that's my motto, and it, 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 it paid off. Yeah. Because if I would have had that stinger, I would have been back in the same boat again. And the, the, the car industry right now, it doesn't look like we're going to get any better, at least, at, at least for another year. He spoke to this a little there, obviously, but how Turner managed to insulate his turn to transport fleet from the pandemic's ongoing negative effects on the car market was a big part of Cole's reporting. Likewise, the distinction Turner makes between high mount trailers that attach to the tractor via a standard fifth wheel, just like a multitude of other trailers, and so-called stinger steer setups. Those transform a tractor to increase hauling capacity, but limit you to stinger type trailers pulled with that tractor. Turner spoke to rates challenges long term for small car haul fleets like his, particularly on the new car side of the business too, as part of that series. Search the words. Although market turmoil, as I've said before, at overdriveonline.com to pull up the first piece in that series, the rest of it just kind of flows straight from that first story, easily, easily navigated. What wasn't included much in the series was this. Eric Turner's thoughts on the self-reliance aspect of car hauling you heard bunting laud as well, and that CG Sosa obviously came to appreciate. If you put 10 car hauler drivers together, you're only going to probably get three or four of them that'll last. A lot of, a lot of people don't like the... The, the physical part of it mm -hmm. as walking the cars down, they just think you get there and the car just going to fall off on your truck. It's not going <laughs> to 
it's not possibly going to happen. Right. I mean, the, the physical part of it, you know, you're going to the auctions. You're going to the real heads. You're walking the cars down. You got to find the car. Sometimes the car is not where they're supposed to be at. So now you get frustrated. Mm -hmm. They don't like the rain. Don't like getting wet. As far as me, I don't like the cold. So <laughs> I grudge in the winter months when I have to go north. I do it. But every show that everybody know I have, especially when I go to Kentucky. Eric Turner's talking about the Mid-America Trucking Show there, where he's been a fixture over the years with his award-winning Showtime Custom Pete. Everybody knows I cannot stand the cold. <laughs> I hate it. I hate being cold. Yeah. I don't care how many colds I put on. It's just that I'm from down south, and it just I, I just can't. My blood is just thin. That's all I can just say. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a lot of dry, a lot of the people don't they don't know the physical aspect of it. And a lot of people until you learn it, they get frustrated when they have to when they have to take a car off or reload the whole truck just so they can get it to fit. And you know, sometimes if they don't have nobody they can call to help them out, they say, Hey, look here, take this car, put that car right here, put that car right here. Okay, put your pins on number five, put that pin on number six. Sometimes you can be out there all day trying to load that truck. And then now a lot of the car hauling companies, they pay by commission on what the truck turn. Now he's mad because he feel like he's not making any money now. Because the truck not turning no money. Because it's taking him too long to load up. Loading frustrations in car hauling can be solved in a variety of ways, mostly through experience and education, but equipment can certainly play a role. Owner-operator David Bunting of Indiana made this clear, finally, in discussion of the two different setups he owned at the time of Cole's conversation with him. One in particular, he'd had a driver in until recently. And he sings the setup's praises in terms of matching equipment to the versatility needs of what is mostly a used car hauling business for him, as Cole reported. I got a big Stinger steer, a big Western Star, and car hauler. And then this truck that I'm talking to you about now, it is a regular tractor. The 2015 Cascadia, regular tractor, 70-inch uh, bulk, you know, typical, you know, freight truck. The trailer that I pull with it is a five-car car hauler. It is called Sun Country. Sun Country is out of Phoenix, Arizona. They make this trailer. It's uh, it's what I call a wedge, right? It's it's shaped like a wedge, like any wedge trailer would be. But it's but it's a semi wedge. You cannot pull this thing with a dually. This is a 53-foot single axle air ride air brake heavy duty trailer so uh it's low slung to the ground and then you know it goes right up over the top of the fifth wheel so that's how low it is so it's meant to haul three big pieces three pro masters three sprinter vans three dualies three big pieces of equipment that are too much for a dually but also it has the top the top two front decks on it lift and tip so then I can stack a mix of five vehicles on it. A very, very versatile trailer, man. I've been a car hauler 20 years. This thing is a money maker because of what I can haul with it. I can pull into a yard and load uh, Chrysler dually chassis, right? 4,500, 5,500, big chassis, right? And take those down the road, deliver them, go to the next place and load five Lexuses. Like, this thing is so versatile because of what I can haul with it. It's not just a car hauler, it's a truck hauler, it's a van hauler, it's a dually hauler. It's a really, really versatile piece of equipment. You're only in all five pieces instead of nine, but if you do your work right, if I do my job right, I can dispatch this thing for a good amount of money a week. Yet another way to play the car haul game, as it were. Here's a big thanks to David Bunting and Eric Turner for their time and insight, and for you to hang in to the end. To take us out to here's more of good old Virginia Red, penned by Sandy Shortridge and Big Al Weekly. If you haven't checked it out yet, catch Sandy and Big Al every week on our Friday morning program, Overdrive's Music to Truck By at thebluegrassjamboree.com, and also streaming through their mobile app. You can stream a playlist of past episodes, too, via Overdrive's SoundCloud profile. That's soundcloud.com slash overdrive radio. I see a truck stop like life's reality. All the things we are and want to be becomes a memory. 
my dreams I'm running endless smiles I wear a peaceful smile We'll just rest for a little while Jenny Red and me Eighteen wheels are a humming Like a gypsy that is free Out here on the highway Virginia Red and me Together on this highway Virginia Red and me Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, Todd Dills, with additional support from Overdrive Extra contributing writer Paul Marhofer, Overdrive News Editor Matt Cole, Social Media Coordinator Holly Young, and Executive Editor Alex Lockie. Till next time, keep it pro out there.